The average person is said to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom. Why not take advantage of that time and learn something new? Presenting the 15-minute podcast on weird facts, crazy details, and funny particulars that you'll be able to enjoy while you're taking a sh- Well, on your free time. Welcome to The Shit with Sam Butler. Welcome to another episode of The Shit. I'm your host, Sam Butler. I have a very special show for you guys today. I actually have a very good friend of mine from Austin, Texas. He's here in the studio in Ciudad Juarez. He's actually a native of El Paso, Texas. He grew up in El Paso. He went to La Bui. Como muchos de aquí de Juarez, like a lot of my Juarez friends, go to La Bui. He went to La Bui, graduated from La Bui, moved to Austin. But he's visiting El Paso, and I said, hey, dude, you got to come do this shit with me. Hey, I'm glad to have him here. Let me introduce you to my friend, Mr. Josh Castro. How you doing, Josh? Hey, how you doing? Glad to be here. Hey, you do stand-up comedy in Austin, Texas. You started out uh, doing comedy in Austin, so that's how we met. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, uh, I do uh, I do an all-Latino showcase in Austin, Texas, the only one in Austin, Texas. Badass. And I, I promote a lot of Lat- Latino culture. I have a Borderlands, uh, it's called Borderlands. Um and I call it Border Laughs because I'm from the border. Yeah. And I also uh, already launched my uh, podcast called Border Laughs Podcast. So you're a Latino in Austin, Texas, right? You sell tamales, <laughs> elotes, paletas? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, bro. That's racist as well. No, no, <laughs> just chicletes. <laughs> <laughs> just chicletes yeah, because yeah. I learned all the du- I learned it from the dudes from Juarez. So. so you're actually from Segundo Barrio. I mean, uh, uh, we learned on uh, the smallop, the dollop, el dollop. <laughs> Uh, Chihuahuita, man. That was like in your neighborhood, right? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I grew up in the area there and uh, my family grew up there. My my grandma was born and raised in um, Segundo Barrio. And, uh, you know, our family came over uh, uh, during that time when it was uh, established. So there's a lot of rich history there um, where I grew up and uh, it really prompted me to really like uh, do a lot of research and history That's search. Cool, man. And well, I'm glad to have you here as a, Lati- a proud Latino in Austin, Texas. Got to. So, you know, we're representing the Latino culture, so I appreciate you coming out. This podcast, like you guys know, is a 15-minute podcast. It's a quick podcast that you can enjoy, you know, um, <laughs> you know, while well, you're taking a dump. But uh, Oh, yeah, and if yeah. you're taking a shit right now, please pinch one. <laughs> pinch uh, one for you. Pinch one for pinch me. Pinch one for Josh. <laughs> let everybody, let everybody know, you know. Um, I have a very interesting topic for you today. Yes. I, I thought, you know, maybe this this will this will be something we can talk about a little bit. Um, you're familiar with Frankenstein? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's uh, uh, Universal Studios made a movie about it in 1931. I mean, everybody knows who Frankenstein is. Who doesn't know about Frankenstein? Did you know that it has a scientific origin? No, that I did not know. Yes, the actual Frankenstein has a scientific origin. That's what, that's the the shit that I found out, you know? Now, I have um, the author of... The novel, the original novel, was Mary Shelley, mm-hmm. right? She was born in, like, 1795. Got it. Right, uh, yeah, like 1795. And um, she actually had, like, uh, uh, an influence, a scientific influence that made her come up with this character. Mm. See, what happened is right around 1794, let's see. No, in seven, she was born in 1797. I'm looking at my notes. In 1795, two years before she was born, her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, threw herself off a bridge over the Thames in London. Wow. Right. And she had written, uh, she had been deeply depressed. She had written a letter and she was saying that she hoped she would not be snatched from death. In other words, she hoped that she could kill herself and nobody would save her. Right. And so she throws herself off this bridge into the Thames River in London. Mm-hmm. Right. And... Uh, um, this was something that was a concern for her mm-hmm. because you go, who, who commits suicide and thinks they're going to be saved, right? right? Well, back then is when they figured out that they could resuscitate someone mm. that had been drowned. So it's like the origin. Right. So now she goes, oh, I hope they don't keep me from drowning mm-hmm. and I hope they don't resuscitate me. And so this was a pretty reasonable concern on her part that she would be yeah, if, resuscitated. Well, if you want to die, you want to die. Yeah, right. Why hold back? Yeah, she was depressed. <laughs> So there was uh, 18th century physicians had begun to understand that drowning was a reversible condition. Uh, yeah, that yeah. sounds that yeah. sounds about right. But you're talking about 1700s. They're yeah. like they're yeah. like barely figuring out like yeah, they're barely fun- they're, understanding you know <laughs> yeah. human nature and how that works and all that stuff that comes along with it. So this is what it is. 
It had been discovered that some nearly drowned people who appeared dead <gasps> they could, were alive. could be revived if they were pulled from the water quickly and resuscitation procedures were performed. In 1774, two physicians, William Hawes and Thomas Cogan, set up the Royal Humane Society of London to inform the public about resuscitation techniques. At that point, the mechanics of resuscitation were still not understood. Mm -hmm. So some of the recommended procedures, okay, forcing air into the victim's airway and performing abdominal compressions. Well, we still do that today, right? I mean, that's still something that you do, CPR, so on and so forth. Two breaths, 30 Two, compressions. <laughs> there you go. So this may have been effective, but they had other remedies like uh, bloodletting, <laughs> mm. <laughs> administering tobacco smoke enemas <laughs> you know so wow i can blow smoke up your ass maybe that's where that comes from right <laughs> there's, gonna, there's, gonna, a, there's an origin to everything bro <laughs> yeah. there's like, an origin to there it is <laughs> i can't resuscitate this guy blow some more smoke up his butthole you that'll, know that's like <laughs> that'll 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 save him, that'll save him the right. funny thing about the bloodletting issue is that you know that also uh how we did um so the first people that bloodled were actually barbers yeah. They were considered barbers. That's why they got the pole, That's right? That's why they got the blue and red yeah. uh, lines because that was a signal that, oh, I'm sick. I need to go over there. And we're talking about, you know, the yeah, old, the origin of, like, psychology. That's where I learned that uh -huh. from. So, Well, this person is looks dead and they go, yeah, puncture, puncture his skin. Let's get some blood yeah, out yeah, and see yeah, if yeah. he'll come back to life, right? Yeah, pretty much. So, but even with all of this ridiculousness, they still saved people, mm -hmm. which, which that was a pretty good... Medical practice. D discovery. You know, they're discovering this stuff. But it opened the way for new anxieties. Definitely. So in 1795, they had new concerns. For example, because um, uh, people were rescued after they appeared dead. So what that meant was that if you could be rescued after you appeared dead, then you could be buried alive. So, yeah. so now they were creating safety coffins, coffins to keep, you know, coffins in case you were dead. Now this I've heard Yeah, about. you've heard about the coffins, yes. right, where they had yes. the bell? The bell? They had the little bell, and just then they had case. a string, just in case. Just in case. And I think that's where the expression saved by the bell comes from. Yeah, that right? makes sense. So, so like, you, you're in a coffin, and you're dying, and you pull the string, and then the bell rings. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We need to dig them up. We need to dig them up. So... That was one of the influences mm -hmm. uh, of the Frankenstein thing, mm. is that you could actually look dead and appear dead, but not be dead. So it's right? the undead. So it's the undead. <laughs> so the, the, this was obviously uh, Mary Shelley's mother's concern. Right. She goes, you know, I, I hope I can kill myself and, and, and not be brought back to life. I don't want to be a zombie. Yeah, I don't want to be a zombie. So they figured out how air and respiration worked mm -hmm. by, by uh, drowning and dissecting laboratory animals. Well, that's right. a little cruel. Well, I mean, that's how they learn. You, you got to do what you got to do. And though. they figured it out. They go, okay, there's a, a collaboration between air and life, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the bad news is Mary Wollstonecraft, Mary uh, Shelley's mother, mm -hmm. was actually saved. You know, she jumped into the river. And a group of boatmen pulled her unconscious body out of the water. I bet you she was pissed when she woke up. <laughs> I said I want to be dead. They resuscitated her afterwards. She wrote, I have only one. <laughs> I, I have only to lament that when bitterness of death was passed, yeah. I was inhumanely brought back to life and she, misery. Shit, she know? wrote a poem about yeah, it. She wrote a poem like, about I'm it. I'm so upset. I'm going to write a poem about you know? how I didn't die. Yeah, it's like. Ah oh, man, you drama queen. They brought me back to life. Well, two years later, she has her daughter Mary Shelley, mm -hmm. and Mary Shelley um, is born. And about ten days after that, she gets a fever and dies. Mm. So her wish came true finally. You know, <laughs> and, and we're not making fun of anybody with no, depression. It's, it's kind of a you know, it's kind of a sad thing. But it's interesting that that was now a new concern, right? And this is something that is reflected in this character Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Like you can bring the dead back to life, right? It's a totally different concept that has never been established before. Yeah, and, and it's so, like whoa, a whole new world that that is birthed towards you know a medical profession too because mm -hmm. i mean you talk about all the things that come along with it with the bloodletting and you know experimenting with it. i mean you look at the the origins of frankenstein and the electricity you got to wonder like how much stuff did they do before they 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 narrowed it down to okay let's air bloodletting 
And tobacco smoke up the butt. The, <laughs> you know what I'm it was a it's lot like, of. It's like how many things did they do to dude, figure that out? Was a know? lot of dead people. We're pissed. gonna we're gonna narrow it down to three. That's all I'm saying. You know, it's like, it was a lot of people <laughs> to have it upset about yeah. what they did. They were looking down like, look what the hell did they do to my body? Now there was a second major scientific discovery. Interesting. Right. The second discovery happened in the 1780s, and it was an Italian scientist, Luigi Galvani. And he oh, be- I know Luigi. And he began investigating the effects of electricity on animal tissues. Oh, okay. Right. He found that by passing an electrical current from a, a lightning storm, well, that that's like back to the future stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> you know, well, like, how do you even set that yeah, up? Yeah, it's like, hey, we're going to have a <laughs> lightning storm. Let's uh, hang a wire, you know. But he figured out that by... Uh, Harnessing the electricity from a lightning storm or an electrical machine, which makes perfect sense, mm-hmm. through the nerves of a dead frog, the frog's leg could be made to kick and twitch. In 1791, he published an essay announcing that his discovery that animal muscles and nerves contained an innate electrical force, which he dubbed animal electricity. Mm-hmm. Several years later, his nephew, Giovanni Aldini, combined his uncle's discoveries with those of Alessandro Volta, which Volta sounds a little suspicious, like voltage, you know, Volta. He actually invented the first electric battery. That makes and, sense. And so they used batteries to stage a series of experiments on uh, different uh, demonstrations before crowds in Europe. For example, he used the electric currents to stimulate motion in the bodies of dismembered animals. The head of an ox, for example, was made to twitch and open its eyes. Wow. Did it right? ring? <laughs> uh, apparently it did. Aldini's most notorious experiment took place in January 1803 at the Royal College of Surgeons in London. Mm-hmm. He applied an electrical current to the corpse of George Foster, a convict rec- recently executed for drowning his wife and child. Mm-hmm. The body convulsed and applying current to the face caused the jaws to clench and the eyes to open. To the astonished audience, the body appeared to almost come to life. Again, the newspaper said it was like he was being brought back from hell. Yeah. You know, and so you had the mixture of running electricity through body tissue. Right. Making things twitch and being able to bring people back to life. And this is what encouraged Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein. Well, that was two of the major discoveries of the time. And that makes sense how Frankenstein became a character. Right. But she also was, you know, in the 18, in the summer of 1860, 1816, I'm sorry, she rented a house on Lake Geneva with her husband and some other intellectuals. And they had like this thing where they would discuss uh, philosophy and they discussed different things and they, they had a game. Mm-hmm. They were going to write horror stories. Okay. You know, and, and so this is what she came up with. Outside you the know, box stuff. Take, yeah, outside the box. Take body parts from different things. Yeah. Put them together. Breed it back to life. Like what if we could, you know, the heart is connected to the left, you know? That's right. Like, yeah, yeah. And so she came up with that. And and uh, it's, it's pretty clever because I've seen a lot of cars made like that. Oh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, it's like, yeah you, <laughs> man, you could put a good engine in still. Yeah. It's like a good Honda Civic. Yeah, it's, you know got, I mean? it's, got a, it's got a Honda engine and it's got a Toyota. I mean, uh, just uh, look around Juarez Cal- right yeah. here. You see a fucking <laughs> 78 uh, yeah. Toyota just still burning, gra- you know, right. burning the street down there. So that was the interesting fact that I found for this week's episode. Um, Frankenstein actually had a scientific uh, origin. Definitely. And uh, it had to do with the time period. Yeah. And and that's the character that we know and love today. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, it's one of those discoveries, like you said, you know, electricity. And, it, you know, it, it all boils down to, like, you know, the medical profession, you know, and how they're discovering how. I mean, if you think about, you know, how we look at mental illness, for yeah. say, just in mental illness. We barely started discovering, you know, right. certain things that are going on. And this was happening in the 50s. You know, this is yeah. only 50 years ago, like 60, 70 years ago. They were doing lobotomies, you know, and lobotomies, yeah. you know, sticking the whole thing in your eye. But that was a form of practice that was normal. But we didn't know. <laughs> we didn't yeah. know anything any better. So it's an evolution of trying to get to. Uh, it's, like, we- it's like it's uh, like I'm going to mess it up till I get it right. Exactly. Right. And here we are. But so. I mean, think of the mad scientists that yeah. are out there that are thinking, I mean, 
they're probably borderline serial killers. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you want to be inspired by some really good that's horrors. Pretty, that's pretty funny. It's like, uh, well, he was a serial killer, but not really. He wore a lab coat. Yeah, <laughs> you know, of course. Yeah, like, I mean, he <laughs> stuck an ice pick in the dude's yeah, face. But yeah. I mean, yeah, he he was legit. You know, he yeah. had a degree. <laughs> well, that's gonna ra- <laughs> that's yeah. And he and his degree was pretty much made up of uh, he wore a lab coat. So he's got to be a doctor, right? <laughs> so, With a whole stethoscope uh, and the yeah. thing. So, yeah. But uh, that's been this episode. I mean, it's a it's a it's a short. One. Uh, Short and quick. Josh, thank you for joining me. How can people find you on social media? You can find me at just Joshing Comedy, all one word, dot com. Uh, I do, uh, like I said, I do production shows out of Austin, based out of Austin, and I also do a podcast. And uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook at just Joshing Comedy. And that's all one word J U S T. Josh and my name and comedy. A lot of people get just just Joshing guys. Yeah, just Joshing. That's that's me. A lot of people get confused with that, so I just try to put it out there. So. Yeah. Well, and I'm Sam Butler. You guys can find me at Tu Amigo Sam on uh, YouTube, Instagram, all my social media. You could also follow our page, uh, Stacagalo Podcast, Stacagalo Podcast fans. Thank you guys very much for joining us. That's the end of this episode. Y'all uh, be good. Stacagalo.